Hello, my name is Dion Arlen, professional disc golfer and member of Team Discraft. Today we're going to be working on expanding our distance so we can be competitive distance throwers. Welcome to another Discraft Pro Clinic. Today we're going to be demonstrating the distance technique that I used to win the 2010 World Distance Championships. My weapon of choice today is the Elite Z Nuke Max Weight 173-174 gram disc. It is also what I used to throw in the desert to win the title and reach my personal best of 731 feet. There are many factors in producing a good distance shot. A few of the things that I've been able to do in my game is improve my speed and get my body behind the shot. Using your body to get behind the shot is what's going to ultimately get you to your highest distance potential. Beyond physically conditioning yourself to be able to throw far, you have to understand how a disc flies in order to achieve maximum distance. Let's take a look at our grip. A lot of people are going to place the disc along the seam of their hand and wrap all four fingers underneath with the thumb on top. All four fingers have a nice equal pressure against the inside of the rim. My grip is a little bit different. I move the disc up into the inside of my fingers wrap around and really only get these two fingers providing most of the power. My index finger doesn't quite reach all the way around but still feels comfortable to me. I put a lot of downward pressure with my thumb and you can tell kind of bends in the flight plate. That's how I help have control with my shot as well as distance. I'm really getting into the disc nice and firm. All right while we're talking about grip um, let me caution you about a few ways that I think we should not hold the disc if we're trying to achieve distance. The fan grip, as it's commonly referred to, is a way to hold the disc to improve our accuracy. And instead of clinching the fingers underneath the rim, what you're going to see is extending the fingers towards the flight plate. Um, doesn't improve our distance because we're not parting as much force from the hand into the disc. And that's what the grip is all about, transferring as much of your energy into the disc. So if I lighten up my grip and relax, it's going to help with my accuracy, but it's not going to help with my power. Likewise, getting two on top of the disc with the index finger, not necessarily going to be beneficial. Get those two fingers underneath. Let the thumb be the thing that ha handles the top of the disc. Now, a few people that I know of, namely Robbie Bratton, throws a two-finger grip. And unless you're Robbie Bratton, I would caution against that. He's proven that he can throw a million feet, and that's how he holds the disc. Most people's grip is on the pad of their hand when mine is pretty much not even in the palm of my hand, it's in the front. So unless you're a freak of nature like Robbie Bratton, I would recommend getting all four fingers underneath the rim and having a nice firm grip. Any good boxer will tell you that the power comes from the ground up. And that may seem intriguing, but really all they mean is getting the whole body involved, using the legs and pushing up through their punches. All right, same is true in disc golf. Power is going to come from the ground up. We want to get as much as our body involved as possible. So I'll try to break down the mechanics of the throw from the ground up. We're going to take it from our back, back swing or our reach back. Okay, our hips are turned away from our target. Our arm is extended. We're about to turn into the throw. What I want you to think about is getting your heel up, hips turned, arm extended. This is your start position in your back swing. Now, plant the heel. Drop the heel so that you get a little bit of a weight shift. Start to open up the hip, pull through on the shoulder, and as that disc comes across, that's when you're going to accelerate. So again, from the ground up, we have heel up, heel down, open up the hips, open up the shoulders. Speed to me breaks down into two categories. Arm speed, which is how quickly you're pulling the disc across your chest, and base speed, how fast your body is traveling before the throw. To give you an example, a standstill throw has a base speed of zero, whereas a regular X step may have a base speed of four to five miles per hour. You're traveling a little bit and that speed is gonna help you get distance off the tee. The technique that I use is a turnaround drive and I try to amp up my base speed as high as possible so that my whole body is really traveling quick, maybe in the eight to 10 mile per hour range before I throw. A lot of people misunderstand what arm speed really means. They try to work too hard on reaching back and accelerating here 
as opposed to relaxing their body and accelerating here in the last 25 to 30% of your throw. If I concentrate on bringing my whole body, my whole power right back here, I'm gonna be fatigued and slow down by the time the disc actually comes out of my hand. So what's key to remember about arm speed is relax. A relaxed muscle is a quick muscle and accelerate in the last part of the throw. So I'm relaxed, I'm leaning into my shot, boom, right there, right when the disc starts to come across my chest, I wanna accelerate. What you're gonna find then is the disc is coming out cleaner, quicker, gonna fly farther. There are two main discs in the Discraft lineup that I use for my distance shots. The Nuke, which is understable, which means if I release it with hyzer, I'm still gonna turn over, get to that Anheuser phase, get a lot of glide, and come back at the end. And the Force, the Force is a disc that I use on the course because it's very stable. I'll release it flat and even Anheuser on purpose and know confidently it's gonna fight back to that hyzer finish. So for distance, raw distance, out in the open, good conditions, good wind, I recommend using an understable disc like the Nuke. So you can really maximize the flight, maximize the time that the disc is in the air. Just through the ESP Nuke OS pretty effortlessly, about 500 feet uphill, confident that when I leaned back and threw it with some Anheuser, it was gonna fight out and get a good flight. I find more. One of the best tools in disc golf is the towel. Allows you to replicate the throwing motion without having to chase a bunch of plastic. So here I'm gonna give you guys a quick drill that we can work on to help illustrate our acceleration at the end of the throw. So get relaxed, take your towel, grip it by one corner, go to your backswing, just try to think about nice fluid motion and pull through. You're gonna start nice and slow. Okay, and eventually you're gonna to wanna to snap the towel, but again, at the end of the throw, don't think about pulling quickly here, think about pulling quickly at the last half of the flight. If a nice solid towel snap happens, you know you did it correctly. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Remember these things to help you increase your distance. I want you to use your legs, build your throw from the ground up. I want you to accelerate at the end of the throw, and I want you to spend as much time in the practice field as possible conditioning your body to get ready for those maximum distance throws. I'm Deanna Arlen. This was another edition of Discraft Pro Clinics.